Hi guys, welcome. I hope you had a good weekend and I hope it was a productive weekend. Welcome to another session of News in 30 Minutes. Today, let us look at some of the important issues that happened on the 27th as well as today, that is the 29th January 2024. Okay, so let us get on with it. The first is Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, quit West African bloc, ECOWAS. Okay, all three were suspended from ECOWAS with Niger and Mali facing heavy sanctions. Okay, so again, this ECOWAS is in news and the West Asian nations are in news. So you should also understand what is this ECOWAS and what are these uh, West African nations. Okay, so to uh, give you a picture of what is exactly happening, there are four countries. Okay, now uh, before, before I come to the four countries, let me just talk about ECOWAS. What is ECOWAS? Okay, ECOWAS is the full form of this is economic community economic community of west african states it means economic community of west african states this is known as ecowas okay it was formed in 1975 and it was formed under the treaty of lagos it is formed under the treaty of lagos Overall, you have 15 West African nations. This grouping as 15 West African nations. Okay. Now, out of this 15 West African nations, so if we take the 15 West African nations, okay. Now, in this 15 West African nations, four members were suspended. Four members were suspended due to military coup that is the military toppled the elected government and they took over the control of that country hence the four members are suspended whereas the other 11 members are still present okay so who are these four members the four members are first burkina faso okay the second is mali the third is Niger and the fourth is Guinea. Okay, so these are the four countries, okay, whose membership was suspended. So when their membership was suspended, these three nations, the military of this nation has decided, the military of these nations have decided to quit the membership of ECOWAS. Okay, so ECOWAS is both economic as well as political union of West Africa. Okay, so it is a economic and political union of West Africa. So when they say political union, it matters that the military should not take over the nation's control. But because the military coup has been happening, in the uh, you know the west african nations of burkina faso mali and niger as well as guinea the military of these three nations burkina faso mali and niger decided to quit the grouping of ecowas the reason is because uh, the because of the suspension ecowas had kept these nations in suspension and that is why they were uh, you know they result they, they, they uh, then decided to quit the grouping okay so uh, along with this four west african nations Okay, the other important uh, West African uh, nations that are part of this ECOWAS are one is Togo, the second is Benin, the third is Cape Verde, the fourth is Gambia, okay, the fifth is Ghana, okay, the sixth is Guinea, G U I N E A, Basu, B A S S. AU, Guinea Basu. The seventh is Ivory Coast. The eighth is Liberia. Okay. The ninth is Nigeria. Okay. Don't get confused with Nigeria and Niger. Okay. Nigeria. The tenth is Senegal. The eleventh is Sierra Leone. 
okay so overall these are the nations of west africa that is these 15 members of west africa so you should have in your spatial memory okay that is in your visualization you should have these nations so don't try to buy out the english of these names try to keep looking at the atlas mark these places these places are in use so there are very high chances that they can come okay now for you people so this is the entire issue so i hope you now understood burkina mali niger quit west african block the reason is first they were suspended from this grouping and because they were suspended from this grouping the military of these three nations decided that they want to quit the eco wars so i hope you understood the issue okay again it is a mapping uh, perspective based uh, question that can come from this issue so you should now know that west africa is important so you should have a good idea about west african nations okay now an issue that i want you people to research and write in the comment section is which are all sahel nations in the comment section write down which are all the sahel nations and the next is which are all the gulf of guinea states I want you to answer these two questions, which are all the Sahel nations as well as which are all the Gulf of Guinea states. So the reason is I want you people to interact in the comment section. That interaction shows that you are proactive enough that it that itself will inspire the teacher as well as other students to do more. Okay, it should not be a one sided communication. I want you people to interact. I want you people to communicate in that way. Everyone wins in this particular game of preparation. Okay, so please make sure that you research on what are these Sahel nations and what are Gulf of Guinea states. Okay, so this completes the first issue. Let us go on to the second issue of the day. The second issue is Finland. Finland has been in use for a very long time. So there are very high chances that again a mapping question can come regarding Finland. But before I get into the mapping aspects, you should understand the background. So the background or the context of what is happening is Finns choose new president for NATO era with Russia in mind. Okay. So basically what is happening is now look, uh, uh, Finland, okay, has become the 31st member of NATO. Okay. And uh, this is the most recent member. This is the most recent member okay and this happened in 2023 so currently there are 31 members in nato and the 31st member is finland now this finland remained as a non-aligned country that is it had maintained its neutrality now because russia is becoming aggressive and because russia invaded ukraine this forced finland to become the member of nato okay so that is the first thing that you should keep in mind the second reason why finland is important or is in use is finland has accused russia okay for pushing migrants it has accused russia of pushing migrants into its borders okay and it is telling that this pushing of migrants is happening purposely by russia in order to destabilize finland to destabilize Finland, the Russian government is pushing the migrants into the borders of Finland. Again, this has resulted in closing of the borders, closing of borders by Finland. That is the second issue that is happening. The third issue why Finland is in use is they recently signed a defense pact with USA. Now this defense pact that was signed with USA, that is Finland and USA has irked the Russian government. The reason why Russia is not liking this is Russia considers that Finland is part of the Eastern Europe and it should not come under the sphere of influence of NATO. Okay. However, Finland has already become the member of NATO. Okay. Actually, the 32nd member is again still it is in contention. It is still not uh, there. but. Sweden is aspiring to become the 32nd member. However, what you should know is it is still not a member. So it is still aspiring. So in NATO, there are 31 members. So overall, to summarize, Finland is in use because of three reasons. One, it became the most recent member of NATO. 
The second is it is accusing Russia of pushing migrants into its border. And the third is it signed a defense pact with USA. Now with all this, China, I mean, sorry, Finland is also trying to choose a new president, keeping the NATO era and Russia in mind. Okay, so the, with this news, let us now understand the mapping perspective that can or that should be learned by an aspirant who is preparing for this exam. Okay, now first let us look at this. Look at this. The Finland-Russia border crossing is closed. Okay, so look at this. This is the part where Russia shares its border with Finland. Okay, and the so Finland government accused Russia of pushing the migrants into Finland. Okay, that is the first issue. So you should know how the border of Finland and Russia is and this is how it is. Okay, so I have just a glance of these names. You should have just a glance of these names along the border. Okay, now with that, let us now look at a few mapping based questions. Now, what you should understand is what are Baltic nations? Okay, when they say what are Baltic nations, it means three nations, Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia. These are the three Baltic nations. Okay, the next, the next thing that you should know is which are all the nations bordering Baltic Sea. When they say which are all the nations that are bordering Baltic Sea, go in a clockwise direction and go in the direction that I will tell you. First look at Norway, then Sweden, then Finland. Okay, then you have Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. Now, this is very important. Look at this part. This is Russia. It is Kaliningrad. Okay. This is known as Kaliningrad part of Russia. Okay, and then you have Poland, Germany and Denmark. So, we will repeat with numbering. In clockwise direction, we will repeat. First is Norway. Second is Sweden. Third is Finland. Fourth is Estonia. Fifth is Latvia. Sixth is Lithuania. Seventh is Russia. 8 is Poland, 9 is Germany and 10 is Denmark. Okay, so instead of trying to bayard the English, visualize the names in anti-clockwise direction for 5 to 6 times, you'll get the idea. Sorry, not anti-clockwise, in clockwise direction. Keep visualizing the names in clockwise directions uh, for 5 to 6 times, you'll get the idea. So one, you learned, so you learned what are Baltic nations okay and then you learned what are the nations surrounding what are the nations surrounding baltic sea okay the next is what are nordic nations or what are scandinavian nations scandinavian nations so now scandinavian nations are basically one you have the iceland the second you have norway Okay, the third you have Sweden, the fourth you have Finland, okay, the fifth you have Denmark, okay. Now, in Denmark, this you can also, the Scandinavian or Nordic nations also constitutes Greenland, it also constitutes Faroe Islands. So, if they don't give Denmark, if they just give Greenland and Faroe Islands, even then this is correct, okay. Also, Finland constitutes another island called Arland. Okay, so if they don't give Finland, if they give you Arland, Arland also belongs to Finland and this is also part of Nordic nation. Okay, so these are all parts of Finland. That is why even Arland is correct. Greenland is part of Denmark. Foro Islands is part of Denmark. So if they ask you Nordic nations or Scandinavian nations, they can ask you either these names or they can club these names with these names. So don't get confused if they club with these names, even they are considered part of Nordic nations. Okay, so you learned what are Baltic nations, nations surrounding Baltic Sea and Nordic nations as well as Scandinavian nations. So I hope this is how you should first understand the context because the context is what will build you that curiosity in learning about the location. So once that context is built, then go to the map, look at the location and build your spatial memory. Okay, so I hope you understood the spatial memory of Baltic Sea. The reason why again Baltic Sea is important is because of this part of Russia. Russia is there in Baltic Sea and this is something that these Norway, Sweden and Finland fears. 
that is why norway and sweden and finland are now trying to become part of the west and finland was the most recent member and sweden is now trying to be the 32nd member it is still not there but it is trying to be so this is the background context as well as the spatial part of this news let us go to the next issue of the day the next issue of the day is again a mapping question look at that north korea fires cruise missiles of east coast says south korea okay so basically it is firing the cruise missile into yellow sea okay so something that you should know is what is east asia or what the uh, you know the western countries call as far east okay when you take east asia or far east you have these many countries one is you have china the second is you have south korea the third is you have north korea okay and the fourth is you have eastern part of russia okay these four put together are known as east asia or far east countries okay now that is the first part so by looking at this you should not just buy out these names you should go to the map and try to develop the spatial memory okay so that's the first one and anyways with that now the next is the next thing that you should know is yellow sea north korea is firing cruise missiles of the east coast okay when they say east coast they are basically firing into yellow sea so there are three i mean there are two what important water bodies in the east asia the one is yellow sea and the second is the sea of japan the second is the sea of japan so if you look at these two seas let us now look at what are all the nations that are bordering the loc as well as the nations that are bordering the sea of japan that in turn will give you a special memory of this yellow sea and sea of japan okay first let us look at the sea of japan okay so if you look at sea of japan take a look at first japan the country called japan then look at the country called south korea then look at the country called north korea then china and then russia again go in clockwise direction you have japan south korea north korea china as well as russia okay so basically these are the east asian or the far east countries so once you now know the far east countries now look at the sea of japan okay and if you look at the sea of japan and now again from japan go to south korea go to north korea and go to russia look at it china does not have any border with the sea of japan if you can observe very closely china does not have any border with the sea of japan you can see that there is russia here and there is north korea here so china does not have any border in the sea of japan okay so now this sea of japan is also known as east sea don't get confused okay they can just say east sea or far east sea so it is the same as the sea of japan okay now on the north you can see the sea of okhotsk this sea of okhotsk is again uh, something that is between japan and russia sea of okhotsk is between japan and russia and there is sakhalin island this sakhalin island is part of russia which is very famous for natural gas and petroleum okay again you also have kuril islands here kuril islands is being in contention see the ownership of these islands is in dispute between russia and japan okay the ownership of kuril island has been you know in conflict between russia and japan so i hope you got the spatial memory of the sea of japan and the surrounding countries again the east asia or far east asian countries are go in anti clockwise direction i'm uh, like this sorry go in clockwise direction like this you have japan you have south korea north korea china and then russia these are the far east countries the sea of japan has all the far east countries except china okay now with that let us look at the yellow sea okay let us look at the yellow sea as you can see this is the sea of japan this is the yellow sea and this is east china sea okay as you come down you have the taiwan south of taiwan is the south china sea okay south china sea also has been in use but in today's issue we are mainly concerned with this yellow sea 
okay so if you look at this yellow c okay yellow c is basically a c that is bordering as you can see south korea north korea as well as china okay yellow c is bordering three nations south korea north korea as well as china so that is yellow c and this is c of japan so i hope you understood the two uh, important water bodies in east asia and you also learn about the far east or the east asian nations again as you can see here this ryukyu islands as well as senkoku islands okay that is south of japan has always been in contention between japan and china they have always been in contention between japan and china okay so i hope you understood these uh, water bodies again the water bodies are very important the three important water bodies are one is sea of japan you should know very well the second is yellow sea that is also important and the last is south china sea okay south china sea is also very important okay and few straits that are very important are one is uh, suguru strait okay the second is sushima strait okay and the third is lushan strait okay so suguru strait sushima strait and lushan strait these are some important straits i have given it to you mark it in your atlas by looking at it okay so this completes the mapping part of this particular headlines okay so let us move on with the next issue of the day the next issue is isro okay now isro successfully completes all missions under poem3 and it is set to make reentry into earth so what is this article talking about is this article is talking about a recent launch called exposat okay exposat the full form of exposat is x ray polarimeter satellite it is expo x ray polarimeter satellite okay this is the third space based observatory this is the first space based observatory the other two are the first is astrosat and the second is aditya l1 okay and this aditya l1 is the first space based observatory of sun it is a first space based observatory dedicated for sun so don't get confused in the words if they ask you the first space based observatory sun space based observatory then this becomes the first okay however if they just ask space based observatory if they don't ask we dedicated to sun if they just ask space based observatory then aditya l1 is second the first is astrosat and the third is the exposat okay so exposat becomes the third space based observatory of india okay and this exposat basically monitors or it tries to trace polarized x ray okay it tries to monitor as well as track polarized x rays okay and this polarized x rays basically are a feature of this polarized x rays are basically a feature of heavy cosmic bodies okay like black holes and neutron stars this polarized x rays are a feature of heavy cosmic bodies okay hence overall the objective of exposat is to study more about black holes as well as neutron stars not only this any cosmic body that has very high levels of weight or gravity that body is associated with polarized x rays and exposat helps shedding this polarized x rays and which in turn helps us understand this heavy cosmic bodies such as black holes and neutron stars okay so this is the summarizing of exposat why am i talking about this exposat is now i will give you the connection between the headlines and this the pslv okay that carried the exposat okay it launched the exposat okay and now the pslv is set to re enter it is set to re enter 
the uh, you know earth it is set to re enter the earth all right now before it re enters the earth it undergoes something called orbital decay okay what is orbital decay if this is earth okay so the orbits that the uh, you know the orbits that the satellite uh, makes on earth it keeps reducing in distance it keeps reducing in distance and finally this particular uh, you know uh, pslv the launch vehicle will enter the earth okay so that reduction of that reduction of orbiting distance that reduction of orbiting distance is what i call it as orbital decay okay now why am i telling you about or orbital decay is this pslv for re entering the earth it has to undergo orbital decay when it is undergoing orbital decay there is a payload in pslv called poem3 what is poem3 that is pslv orbital sorry pslv orbital experimental module 3 okay pslv orbital experimental module 3 so what is happening is this pslv when it is returning to earth when it is trying to re-enter earth the launch vehicle after launching when it is trying to re-enter earth okay now it is re-entering through this process called orbital decay and when it is re-entering uh, usually instead of just re-entering without doing any functions what isro has done is isro has uh, you know designed certain experiments that a payload can do within the pslv okay so i'll just repeat the pslv that is returning or re-entering the earth instead of just re-entering empty handed the isro has created some payloads that will perform experiments during its re-entry to the earth okay now these experiment experiments that the isro had set up is known as poem3 so i hope you understood what is poem3 poem3 is pslv orbital experimental module 3 these are experiments that the uh, you know P, uh, the launch vehicle had to perform during its re-entry to the earth and it is said that isro is telling that these experiments that it had set up were all done successfully that is another feather in the crown of isro okay so i hope you understood the uh, you know uh, the essence of this poem that is the pslv orbital experiment module 3 okay now some of the names of experiments that were conducted this can ask, be asked again in prelims okay experiments that were conducted while the pslv was uh, entering okay some of the experiments that were conducted were one is arca 200 the second is rudra the third is belief sat the fourth is dex these were some of the experiments that were conducted by the pslv as it was re-entering earth our it was re-entering earth via the process of orbital decay and within this pslv there was a payload that was created in order to carry out these experiments and the payload is known as pslv orbital experiment module 3 and this has been successful so i hope you understood the entire process of now let me read isro successfully completes all missions under poem3 okay set to make re-entry into earth after the launch of this exposat it takes around three months for the pslv to re-enter okay now in this three months instead of leaving this re-entry uh, uh, empty what isra has done is to capitalize on the productivity of these three months isra had created some experiments under poem3 which has been completely successful and now in the next 70 days this pslv is set to re-enter the earth's atmosphere so i hope you understood the concept of exposat i hope you understood the concept of re-entering the earth and i hope how this experimental module has been set up which has been successful in experimenting arka 2000 rudra belief set as well as dex these are a few experiments there are many more experiments that are done however uh, these were few that i felt that it is important and this you can use in your uh, i mean this can be used uh, for asked in i mean this it can be used in your prelims preparation that is they can just ask recently in news these are the terms that were seen this is in the context of what they can just ask you like that so in that way uh, they can just test you whether you know or have heard these terms or not
okay so this completes this issue let us move on to the next issue of the day the next issue of the day is a case study okay it is a case study of determination it is a case study of grit it is a case study of courage okay it is a case study of positive thinking or optimism it is a case study of hard work okay and never give up attitude so this case study can be used in your gs2 it can be used in your gs4 as well as it can be used in your essay okay and the case study is talking about a padma shri award winner of this year 2024 the padma shri award winner dr prema dhanraj dr prema dhanraj okay so this entire case study is about the uh, dr prema dhanraj who is a burns survivor who was admitted to an hospital who has now become a doctor in the same hospital who uh, once admitted her as a burns survivor okay so she had very high degree burns during her childhood okay so let me just give you a case study of what has happened okay now dr prema dhanraj okay dr prema dhanraj as a child wanted to be a singer okay now during one of her uh, you know days where she was at the helm of her singing competition she suffered burns due to a cooking accident okay and when she suffered burns due to her cooking accident she lost not only her face to it but also her voice so when she spoke people used to address her as sir that was the worsening of her voice which went from melody to very harsh okay so two things has happened her burns has not only uh, you know created so much of pain in the face but her ambition or her dream of becoming a singer is also gone okay now any individual who is there at this stage would have suffered depression would have you know uh, taken up different ways of addictions who had given up on life and would de develop negative attitude or negative thinking okay however this was not so with dr prema dhanraj okay dr prema dhanraj took it as a determination she worked hard and she became a surgeon as i told you she became a surgeon in the same hospital which had treated her for the burns and today the 70 year old doctor is still treating patients for their burns okay and she has started a, a you know a ngo called agni raksha and this agni raksha has already conducted 25000 free surgeries it has already conducted 25000 free surgeries so this is a very inspiring story of this individual who has been awarded the padma shri for her contribution to the society not only through her free surgeries but also as a means of inspiration to many individuals who have suffered setback in their lives that is why i told you this is a beautiful case study that can be spoken for determination grit courage positive thinking hard work as well as never give up so i hope you can use this case study as an introduction to your essay that adds a very good uh, you know uh, value while starting off your essay okay so this is about the case study <clears throat> let us go to the next issue the next issue is again about the forest right concerns that could influence electoral results nearly a third of its constituencies okay so here the entire uh, you know this particular part is basically political so we are not interested in this but what is interesting is this 
okay the forest rights act is very very important so don't worry about the other things that is given in the article but you should have some idea about this forest rights okay again if we take the forest rights act the full form of forest rights act is scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers recognition of forest rights act 2006 so this is in short called as forest rights act okay that is fra now this forest rights act enables it enables tribal and forest dwellers it enables tribal and forest dwellers to claim legal rights over their land it allows the tribals and forest dwellers to claim legal rights over their land okay now <clears throat> this is the entire objective of this forest rights act now this rights that this forest rights act provides that is fra 2006 it provides these are the following rights that it provides one is it provides title rights the second is it provides forest use rights that is they can use the minor forest produce the third is it provides relief and developmental rights that is if they have to be evicted then you have to provide them proper compensation and uh, you know uh, rehabilitation the next is forest management rights that is they have the right to conserve as well as protect forests so these are broadly the rights that are given under this forest rights act the one is title rights use rights that is using of minor forest produce the next is relief and developmental rights in case if there is any type of uh, you know eviction of these people from the forest then you give them relief and compensation the next is they have the right to protect the forest okay and under this title rights you have two types individual title rights okay as well as community rights okay so community rights is entire community is given the right to manage the land under what we call as grama sabha so if this grama sabha will become more powerful grama sabha constitutes all those tribes in that particular land so any type of non forest use you have to take the permission of grama sabha any type of let us say mining resources forest conversion coming up of infrastructure anything it has to take the permission of grama sabha okay so this is a birds eye view of the forest rights act i have done this forest rights act in previous classes in detail so i'll not dwell very much in detail into it but one important mains statistics that is given is which is very important for me from your mains perspective is the first is the data that is given by the ministry the data that is given by the ministry of tribal affairs because this act comes under the ministry of tribal affairs so the data given by tribal affairs is as of october 2023 okay there were 2.2 million individual land titles there were 2.2 million individual land titles and 1.1 lakh community titles that are given till date there are 2.2 million individual land titles 1.1 lakh community titles that are given till date so overall 2.3 million titles have been given uh, uh, to the tribes or forest dwellers this is the data given by ministry of tribal affairs now what is the stat state of affairs is see the 2.2 million individual land titles is good but look at this how low is just 1.1 lakh community titles so there is a constant uh, you know criticism that the community rights okay the community rights are not provided by the forest bureaucracy the forest bureaucracy looks at this act as endurance or an obstacle and it also will not easily give out this community titles to this forest or forest dwellers or tribes so that is one criticism okay however this is the data given by the ministry of tribal affairs along with this data there is another data that is given by several ngos and these ngos will estimate that 
30 million land okay sorry 30 million hectares of forest land 30 million hectares of forest land that constitutes 40 percent of total forest that constitutes 40 percent of total forest can come under community forest rights can come under community forest rights now this will help 200 million people for their livelihoods as well as it will help 90 million tribes okay so look at this statistics this is huge statistics that you can use in your mains exam so our estimate given by several NGOs says that if this act is implemented in its truest spirit 30 million hectare of forest land can be given to the community forest rights which in turn will indirectly help 200 million people and it will directly help 90 million tribes in their livelihood okay so this is an estimate if you compare this estimate with what is the data that is given by the government we know that the act is not implemented in its spirit at least the part where the community rights or community titles that is to be given to this forest dwelling communities is not done in its spirit okay so this is something regarding this particular act that you should have an idea okay however we have done this particular act in detail in the previous classes you can look at the thumbnail you can look at the tissue and study about it okay but you should have idea about this act from both prelims and means perspective okay so environment as a topic this act is very very important so please have an idea about these acts okay so this completes this issue the next is what is Ladakh's demand on Gilgit Baltistan okay this is an issue as I told you in 2019 okay in 2019 the government revoked article 370 and the government transformed the government transformed state of JNK it transformed the state of JNK into two union territories it transformed JNK into two union territories the one union territory is the union territory of J and K okay this is the first UT okay the second UT is Ladakh union territory okay so these are the two union territories that were set up after transforming the state of JNK after revoking article 370 that provided special privileges for the state of JNK this happened in 2019 so now this currently you have the union territory of Ladakh okay now this union territory of Ladakh are proposing they are proposing several demands okay and within this several demands are the demand of Gilgit Baltistan okay they want the Gilgit Baltistan to be extended territorial control they wanted it to be the extended territorial control okay now before I show you this let me just give you a preview of let us say that this is this is the this was the state of Jammu and Kashmir now within this state of Jammu and Kashmir they have created something called this is Ladakh sorry just yeah this is uh, Ladakh okay and this is the Jammu and Kashmir both are created as union territories however the statehood of Jammu and Kashmir will be returned very soon but the Ladakh uh, there is no uh, future uh, you know a talk by the government what Ladakh is going to stay as union territory or will be transformed into state however that is a different story but this union territory of Ladakh is now claiming that this part this is Gilgit and this is Baltistan okay it is claiming that there has to be a territorial control of this into Ladakh itself it is claiming that okay so this is the extended territorial control that the union territory of Ladakh is claiming okay along with this within the Ladakh comes Aksai Chin okay so Aksai Chin is also the part of Ladakh okay however what you should also realize is if I draw another diagram what you should also realize is this sorry this is uh, this is what is 
LOC between Pakistan and India. So you have Pakistan occupied Kashmir here and this is what is LAC that is this side is China, China occupied Ladakh. Okay, this side is China occupied Ladakh. Okay, Ladakh or Aksai Chin. Okay, China occupied Aksai Chin. And this side is Pakistan occupied Kashmir. So you have LOC on one side, LAC on the other side. Okay, so currently the Gilgit Baltistan, currently the Gilgit Baltistan that the Ladakh is claiming, that Gilgit Baltistan falls in POK. So this is the region that the Ladakh Union Territory is claiming as an extended territorial control. Okay, now let so you understood the mapping part. Now let, let me just show you the diagram. Okay, now look, this is the diagram. Okay, this is the diagram. So here you should not get confused. Look at the Jammu and Kashmir. Okay, this part, this part will be Jammu and Kashmir. Okay, and the leftover part, this part will be Jammu and Kashmir, and the leftover part, the left the leftover means this entire part, this entire part. Okay, this entire part will be the part of Ladakh. Okay, so this is the ideal, ideal scenario. But let me just remove this. As I've already explained to you, you also have the line of control and you also have this part. This is the line of actual control. Line of actual control is between China and India and line of control is between India and Pakistan. Again, I'll remove this. Okay, so you can look at the diagram and get a visual memory. Okay, so this is uh, the Gilgit Baltistan part. So I hope you understood this. So Ladakh is claiming this. Okay, now I'll tell you what you mean by this claiming. I'm, I'll just explain it to you. So I hope you understood the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir and Union Territory of Ladakh. Okay, so what is Ladakh's demand on Gilgit Baltistan? Now let us look at what is its demand. Now the Union Territory of Ladakh is demanding several, uh, I mean it is creating several propositions. The first proposal is it wants restoration of statehood. It wants restoration of statehood and a legislature in Ladakh. It wants restoration of statehood and uh, legislature in Ladakh. The second is it is demanding for the status of sixth schedule in Indian constitution. Okay, this sixth schedule is basically for tribal areas in Northeast India. These tribal areas basically belongs to Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram. These four states, there is something called autonomous tribal districts. Okay, so Ladakh is also claiming that it should get a sixth schedule on the lines of the tribal areas of Northeast India. That is the second demand. The third demand is they are demanding for Ladakh Public Service Commission. They are demanding for Ladakh Public Service Commission. The fourth thing, this is where this is where you should understand. Uh, this is where it is asking for the Gilgit Baltistan's extension. See, prior to 1947 the Ladakh district prior to 1947 the Ladakh district constituted or included constituted or included Gilgit Baltistan okay the Ladakh district in included Gilgit Baltistan but post 1947 okay post 1947 this Gilgit Baltistan will come under the Pakistan occupied Kashmir. Okay. Now, what uh, Ladakh, Union Territory of Ladakh is demanding is it demands the extension. It demands the extension of control up to Gilgit Baltistan. That is what it is telling is when we get back the Gilgit Baltistan, this Gilgit Baltistan should go to the Union Territory of Ladakh. That is what it is trying to imply. The second what it is trying to imply is you provide reservation of seats within the legislature. You provide reservation of seat within the legislature once the legislature is granted in Ladakh. Okay. So once you provide legislature in Ladakh, in this legislature, you provide some amount of reservation of seats to Gilgit Baltistan region. So that 
kind of legitimizes the stance that Gilgit Baltistan belongs to the Ladakh part of India. Okay, so this is the overall demands that Ladakh is asking. So I hope you understood the two uh, requests that are done along with the other requests that has been put forth by the Ladakh. Okay, what you should also understand is currently if you take Ladakh, Ladakh is a union territory. This union territory has two parts. You have LAHDC, you have LAHDC that is Ladakh Autonomous Hill Development Council, Kargil. Ladakh Autonomous Hill Development Council, Le. These are the two districts inside the Union Territory of Ladakh. Okay, so you have the Ladakh Autonomous Hill District Council of Le. This is dominated by Buddhists, and you have Ladakh Autonomous Hill Development Council, Kargil. This is dominated by uh, Muslims. Okay, overall, this is how the Ladakh is designed. So, this is the Union Territory of Ladakh, which is requesting state, which is requesting legislature, which is requesting sixth schedule, which is also requesting the territorial control and the reservation of seats within the legislature in Gilgit, Baltistan. Okay, so for this, the government has set up something called Kishan Reddy Committee. The government has set up something called Kishan Reddy Committee in 2022 and Kishan Reddy Committee is looking into the demands or the proposals laid by the people of the Union Territory of Ladakh. Okay, So I hope you understood this issue, what is Ladakh's demand on Gilgit, Baldistan and why they want it as an extended territorial control. Okay, So this is about the entire issues of the day. So I hope you have enjoyed it and more than enjoyed, I hope you like the clarity in the concepts. Whenever you learn the concepts, work on the clarity. If you have enjoyed these videos or these issues, please don't forget to share, like as well as subscribe guys. Please get as many friends as possible to tune into this initiative so that I am incentivized to do this on a regular basis. Thank you so much for all the love and support guys. I am going to see you tomorrow. Bye.